welcome to the channel. Here, I share scareful stories. Stories to make you scared, make you think, make you wonder, and maybe, just maybe, make you a little more careful. If you like what you see, please give the video a like, leave a comment down below to let everyone know what you're thinking, and I'd love it if you would subscribe to the channel. I've been fascinated by missing person cases since I was a kid, and people who go missing in the wilderness are somehow extra intriguing to me. So with that in mind, here are two scareful stories of people who went missing in Yellowstone National Park. First, a little background on the park. Yellowstone National Park was established on March 1, 1872, and is America's first national park. It covers nearly 3,500 square miles, mainly in Wyoming, but also extending into Montana and Idaho. When most people think of the park, they think of Old Faithful Geyser, vast expanses of land with herds of buffalo, bears, deer, elk, and other assorted wildlife. They may also think of majestic waterfalls and incredibly colorful pools of water, some of which literally boil from their extreme temperatures. What many don't realize is that Yellowstone National Park encompasses the Yellowstone Caldera, which is the largest supervolcano in North America. The geysers and hydrothermal pools are a result of continuing volcanic activity. On the list of things you need to worry about, this supervolcano erupting is pretty low on the list, but it is on the list. If you plan on visiting, what should be on your list is avoiding scalding hot pools of water and keeping safe in the wilderness. People from all over the world flock to Yellowstone. Many are tourist sightseers, but many are hikers, campers, fishermen, and outdoorsmen. Stuart Isaac would fall into the sightseeing category of visitor to the park. Stuart was 48 when he decided to leave his home in Burtonsville, Maryland and drive across country to visit Yellowstone National Park. He left his home on September 6, 2010, leaving a note for his family saying he was headed to Yellowstone. No why was given. The drive would have taken him around 32 hours and he arrived at Yellowstone National Park on September 7th. How Stewart spent his days and where he slept is either unknown or unreported. In fact, nothing has been reported about how he spent the next few weeks after arriving at the park. During a routine patrol, Stewart's abandoned car was found on September 26th. The last known contact Stewart had with anyone was on September September 24th when he spoke on the phone to a friend from high school. The pair spoke for around two hours and Stewart told his friend that he was on his way to Yellowstone when in fact he'd already been there for weeks. His friend would later say that she was surprised by the call as they normally communicated through emails and text messages and not by phone. On September 26, Stewart's 2009 black Lexus was found at Craig Pass. It was parked along the section of the Grand Loop Road, which connects Old Faithful and the West Thumb. The car was found unlocked and with the keys inside. No trace of Stewart has ever been found. His family and friends could not figure out why he traveled all the way to Yellowstone National Park, and everyone said that he was not a hiker or a camper. The area his car was found in did not have any trails nearby either. A search was mounted, but nothing was found. It's been nearly 12 years with no further hints or clues to Stuart Isaac's disappearance. Unlike Stuart Isaac, Mark O'Neill and his half-brother Kim Crumble were outdoorsmen extraordinaire. Mark was 67, Kim was 74, and both had worked for the National Park Service. The two planned a four-night stay in Yellowstone's backcountry and planned on doing some canoeing on Shoshone Lake, which is the second largest lake in Yellowstone. When the pair didn't return home, they were reported missing on September 19, 2021. Park rangers organized a search and rather quickly they came across their campsite on the south side of the lake. On the east shore, searchers located a canoe, a personal flotation device, along with some personal belongings of Mark and Kim's. On September 20th, 2021, Mark's body was found. An autopsy revealed that he had died from exposure and hypothermia. Lake Shoshone averages only 48 degrees all year round. In that temperature, a person can survive being in the water right around 30 minutes. The search for Kim continued, hoping against hope that he had survived whatever tragedy had befallen them when they were out on the water. If anyone could make it out of a really bad situation, it was Kim. Kim Crumble was a Vietnam War veteran and a former Navy SEAL. He was awarded the Bronze Star and a Presidential Award for his military service. After serving in the military, he pursued work that involved conservation and the wild outdoors. He worked for the National Park Service in Grand Canyon National Park and was also an experienced river runner, spending some of his time as a professional river guide. Mark had also worked as a river guide and park ranger, working at both the Grand Canyon and Washington's Olympic National Park. John Davis, 
head of the conservation organization Kim was working for when he went missing said, If I was in a pinch in a wild place and I had one person I could call upon, it would be Kim Crumble. Search dogs and helicopters were used to search for Kim. They looked on the trails in the area along with searching the shoreline by boat and the water by helicopter. After a few days, the rescue efforts became a recovery one and the park's submerged resources center used sonar to search underwater. By October 8th, the recovery effort was scaled back because of snow and freezing temperatures. Unofficial searches continued with volunteers walking the shoreline. Given their life experiences, it wasn't surprising that after Mark was found dead, and Kim was missing that some began to wonder if something criminal or sinister happened. But Becky, Kim's wife, said it was a fluke thing and it was an act of nature. And yeah, they both survived a lot of things in their life, but they didn't survive this one. Kim's son Daniel said that the timing of this accident is unspeakably sad, but I take some comfort in knowing that they loved us doing what they loved and that they had each other in what would be their last of many shared struggles. Both are dearly loved and missed and deservedly so. As of today's date, Kim's body has not been found. Well, those are just two of the many stories of people who have gone missing, not just in Yellowstone National Park, but in national parks all across the country. Let me know which wilderness disappearance intrigues you the most, and as the weather gets nicer, remember to stay safe and stay careful if you do find yourself out in the majestic national parks. 